What's up YouTube, Cody with Rattlesnake Ranch. In today's video, we are going to show off some of the morphs that we have here of the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake Crotalus Atrox. Here's how today's video is gonna work. We've got a list of each morph here. Uh, Logan and I got a bunch of clips of the different morphs that we have. And uh, not gonna lie, a lot of these snakes are a little bit psychopathic. So because they're a little cranky sometimes, uh, we didn't pull any that we really didn't need to. And so uh, we did pull a couple out, but um, if they seem calm in some of this footage, don't let it deceive you. These are very defensive snakes, very large snakes. And uh, yeah, so anyway, hope you guys enjoy watching. I'll get on the list here in a second. We've got several morphs here, but a little bit of background. So this is Crotalus atrox, the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. This is a uh, very ubiquitous snake in kind of the southeastern edge of California through all of Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, south into Mexico. Um, they even get into states like Oklahoma and some of the states around Texas there. Um, they are the largest rattlesnake species that is west of the Mississippi River in the United States. And uh, they can sometimes have a little attitude. I don't mean that in like an aggressive way. None of these animals are aggressive, but they are very quick to defend themselves. So um, thankfully most of the snakes behaved when we filmed them today, but we had a couple that were a little cranky. And uh, diamondbacks, just because of how common they are, various morphs have popped up in nature and um, and also in captivity. And so these, of course, with the reptile community have been bred and combined with other mutations. And uh, in a way, the Western Diamondback has kind of become the ball python of the uh, venomous hobby, just because there's so many different variations. Now, I will admit, I'm more of a wild type snake guy, especially as a zoo. Our job, I feel, is to exhibit what you would find in nature, the most natural looking, you know, wild type. We love locality snakes here and things like that. But I will say the morphs are pretty awesome. And uh, what kind of got me into them is we had a pair of albino diamondbacks that we did not know were also het for melanistic. And they produced a couple, what are also known as bubblegum rattlesnakes, which are um, essentially T negative albino and melanistic combined. So, when I laid, laid eyes on that first bubble gum that we got, I was like, okay, morphs are pretty awesome. So, and we also know they're popular and they draw people in to come see what we have here. So they have their place. Now, as far as we keep, uh, how we keep our diamondbacks, they are all in six foot by two foot by 18 inch cages. So pretty spacious uh, exhibits. They get, again, pretty large uh, in excess of four feet often. Um, I'm a little embarrassed to say our exhibits with the Diamondbacks are a little bare right now. Um, I'm still kind of contemplating what direction we want to go with them. The ones right behind me here are actually our dog training snakes. They are very bare for, for good reason. Um, we have to fish those snakes out of those exhibits way more often than our other snakes on display here. And so those, we don't want to have to be unstacking rocks and moving logs and stuff to get the snakes out. And so theirs are by design kept very simply. But our morphs, we have no excuse. We plan on doing some naturalistic bedding and adding some more decorations to it. We're gonna do that this winter when they are in our hibernaculum and not on display because that'll be a much nicer time to take our time and get those cages looking nice for when we wake them up in spring. But without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the various morphs and a couple locality uh, Aatrox that we have here. So first up, we have our, of course, normal Western Diamondback rattlesnakes, uh, specifically the Sonoran type. And so we've got a pretty good size one. Um, he's probably not too far from five feet and uh, pretty well behaved. So we went ahead and pulled him out. And this is one of our dog training snakes, one of several that we rotate through. 
And uh, yeah, these are just your normal, beautiful, het for nothing, wild type Western diamondback rattlesnakes. They have you know, the iconic diamond shaped pattern down their back and the very distinct black and white stripes um, just before the rattle at the end of the, their tail. So that's the normals. And I'm gonna kind of blow through these. We got several here and I'm um, kind of on a time crunch to make this video. I will say we're gonna make another version of this video later because a lot of these morphs are on the younger side and when they get a lot more size on them, we'll do another video just like this. So, all right, that's our normal Western Diamondbacks. We have two other normal Western Diamondbacks, but different localities. Uh, next up would be our South Texas ones. So these come from a county in South Texas where the Diamondbacks are known to get very large, like six feet. And so we got these as youngsters from somebody I know that works down in that area and uh, we're raising them up and hopefully they've got the genes to be enormous Diamondbacks. Other than that, their color is pretty much the same as the Arizona ones, maybe a little different. You can tell they're from a different region, um, but size-wise, we're hoping there's something special and we hope years from now, we'll have a couple true six-foot Crotalus Aatrox. Uh, after that, we have a, I've seen people call these different things, um, like pastel or whatever, or portal pinks, but anyway, these are Western Diamondbacks from the Boot Hill part of New Mexico and Arizona border area. And uh, these kind of tend to have like a pinkish hue to them. It's really hard for my phone to pick up those subtle salmon-y pink tones, but promise you these have a pink color. And I will also say they look different in the day versus the night. There's times I've walked in here and this exact snake has, like the diamond shapes are, are almost reduced to patternless, like very, very light and the pink is more vibrant. So it seems like this snake can change the pink a little bit based on its mood. So anyway, but that's a cool snake. Um, so those are the three wild type Western Diamondback localities that we work with and have here. All right, let's get into the true uh, morphs. And so with a lot of reptiles, seems like after a certain amount of time, albinism tends to pop up. And so first up, we're gonna show our uh, large pair of T negative albino Western Diamondbacks. Um, we've got a couple adult pairs of these, um, a couple extra large ones, and a couple that seem to have maxed out at a much smaller size. But yeah, nice bright yellow snakes just look fake to a lot of our visitors, which are pretty cool. These guys have a little bit of attitude, but they behaved for um, when we lifted their hide and got some footage of them. And uh, yeah, that's our T negative albinos. Next up, uh, we have our melanistic, um, sometimes called hypermelanistic Western Diamondbacks. So these are kind of the opposite of albino. This is a gene that codes for an overproduction of melanin, whereas the T-negative albino is, you know, a lack of melanin. That's the gene's been disrupted in a way it's not producing melanin um, properly. And so these guys have a nice dark coloration. We've got a handful of these here. And, uh, and a lot of these two, by the way, we breed and we've got babies of them too. So we'll show some footage of a few babies. But yeah, melanistic and just like T-negative albino, uh, both these genes uh, seem to be recessive traits. And so, you know, if both parents have this gene, then they can produce offspring that look like this. If one parent does not have either melanistic or albino and you cross them, you're gonna get hets, normal looking diamondbacks that, um, again, carry the gene, but don't visually have it. Uh, I'm not gonna get too into genetics, but I will mention with each of these morphs um, what I do know about them. And uh, I will admit a couple of them we're just working with freshly, and I don't know exactly if it's like line bread trait, uh, codominant, things like that. So not to get into the weeds. So the T-negative and albino, uh, when in combination, I kind of mentioned this earlier, creates a really unique look, kind of lavendery purple looking. A snake and it has been coined bubblegum and it does have like a kind of chewed up bubblegum pink purple color to it really cool rattlesnakes again this is what got me into diamondback morphs and uh, yeah so our bubblegum atrox and this one we got out and we got him on the floor he was a little cranky and yeah took a few shots at my at my phone so, so again, bubble gum would be a double recessive trait. It has to have T negative albino and uh, melanism to get that look. Going back to single gene recessive, we also have T positive albino, which is also known as caramel. And so caramel albinos are pretty neat. So they have, uh, they're not 
fully albino. There is some melanin production that gives them much darker look than the normal albinos, but it kind of has, as the name implies, like a caramel brown color to them. Um, they don't have the bright, you know, lighter pink pupils and eyes like T-negative albinos do. And uh, this caramel gene, when you combine it with melanism, you get another kind of snake that, again, just like bubble gums, a little wonky looking. And these are also known as purple haze. And so the purple haze Western diamondbacks kind of have, uh, I mean, they all look a little different, it seems like. Um, we've got a cool kind of golden one with some dark blotches. We've got a couple younger ones that are more just kind of tan colored overall. We just produced some babies this year and one of the babies in the back is a little extra dark. So uh, these are pretty variable, really neat looking snakes. And uh, yeah, that would be the purple haze, which is caramel and melanism combined together. After that, just going down the list, we have patternless. I love these. So many rattlesnakes have, you know, the repeated blotch pattern um, one way or another. So to have a snake that's completely patternless uh, is pretty awesome. And this particular snake has a lot of personality, really well behaved, uh, really curious. He often, when people walk by, he'll come out and just kind of look at what's going on. Love the snake. Um, See, so yeah, we have a patternless male who I'm specifically talking about. We also have a female behind me over here and uh, she's not quite big enough to breed so we're keeping her separate but she'll be in with that male um, probably next year so yeah patternless really cool snakes uh, some of the newer genes that we're working with here um, and patternless by the way as far as we know it's it's recessive so just like the albinism and and uh, melanism uh, we have hypo though which i think is also a recessive trait um, but uh, not entirely sure on that, so don't quote me, but we have a young male hypo that we have on display here. He's a little guy, he's got some growing to do. And in with him, we have a really cool uh, double recessive. So this is a um, hypomelanistic as well, and uh, has melanism on top of that. And so this snake has a really weird kind of gray blue color and uh, it just looks like it's in blue. So for those of you who don't know, like when a snake is getting ready to enter into its shed cycle, you'll see their skin get really opaque and kind of often turn like a gray blue color. He just kind of looks like that all the time. Uh, really cool snake, can't wait to see as we raise him up, kind of how he changes over time. But that would be our hypomelanistic and melanistic uh, combination. We also have a little female hypomelanistic albino and uh, she's a really cool snake too just basically looks like a really reduced brightness um, t-negative albino so we'll see also with her how she changes with age but she's only about a year old now so still on the smaller side uh, that would be it for our hypo and hypo combination snakes next up are a couple odd ducks so we have a Western Diamondback female that was given to us along with a son and daughter of hers. So this was a snake that was actually found here in Arizona. And this looks at first glance, just like our pattern list, but it's got something else going on. This has basically what we're calling it striped and uh, striped or aberrant um, because this adult female is fully striped, but there's still some pattern coming through on the sides. You can see some tail striping, whereas in our pattern list, the tail striping has just been reduced to a blur basically. So, um, and the other thing is this snake uh, had a litter of babies and babies kind of went to different people, but no two babies looked the same. Some were partially striped, some were completely striped. And so this appears to be potentially a, you know, maybe it's a co-dominant trait or incomplete dominant trait. We don't really know yet. Uh, maybe it is recessive and kind of like piebald in, in uh, ball pythons. It just kind of shows up randomly. Um, to different extents. So we'll see, but we have uh, an adult female with this striped aberrancy pattern. We've got um, two of her offspring, male and female as well. And uh, we're gonna pair these up with different things and kind of try and prove out whatever this is. So it'll be some time, but we're working on that. And that is our striped slash aberrant um, atrox morph. Lastly, and this is probably one of my favorite color, not necessarily my favorite snakes, but favorite color morph. We have some high red 
uh, also known as urethristic Western Diamondbacks. These things are beautiful. Um, they are very red, especially on the Aspen shavings. They just really pop. And uh, I would argue more red than, than Crotalus ruber, the red diamond rattlesnake. Now, these are not ruber. These are true Aatrox. Uh, as far as I know, these come from the Oklahoma, Texas border area. There's somewhere out in there where the uh, you get these red Aatrox popping up. And this one, I don't know if it's recessive. I think it's more of a line bread trait, but um, we've got a pair of just super nice red ones. And we hope to have more snakes with this um, look. Uh, I know there's red patternless, red albino patternless, red caramels, and yeah, this gene has been uh, worked with, or if it, if it is a gene, it, it seems to be. But anyway, um, Brooke Bernston in um, Texas, in East Texas, has been working with these snakes for a while now and getting some out there. We got these from him, and they are just spectacular snakes, but they do have a lot of attitude. So yeah, uh, that in a nutshell is currently what we have for Western Diamondbacks here at Rattlesnake Ranch. Um, again, we breed most of these. Uh, many of them we're raising up, so it'll be a year or so before some of the smaller ones can breed. But um, these snakes are a lot of fun. I love working with them. They always keep me on my toes. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed seeing a little variety of uh, just color um, with these, these rattlesnakes. Uh, as always, Thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your interest. And uh, yeah, please tell a friend, subscribe, like our videos. We appreciate it. And we will catch you guys on the next video. See you later.